So a couple of weeks ago now, I went to the Play Expo in London. You might remember me talking about it about 20 times in the video announcing that I was going to be there. It was certainly the busiest Play Expo weekend that I've had so far. I mean, I ended up doing, what, two panels over the course of the weekend? Photo shoot, meet and greet. Um, but as usual, it was another really good time at the Play Expo and I just thought I'd make a little video to talk about it all. Um, so the event took place in Canada Water, near Canada Water train station, the Printworks. I would say that Printworks was quite an interesting venue. Um, it was very expansive and very dark at times. It was kind of hard to see all the people walking about. It had like this two floor space. Um, I think it was a nostalgia nerd who said that it looked like the sort of perfect place where you could do a revival of games mastering. In fact, I was wondering, looking around, is if that was the place that perhaps they filmed series three, you know, the one with Dexter Fletcher that kind of has that prison vibe, because there's certainly a lot of quite strange mechanical fins and dark corners and really massive rooms with seemingly floors of stuff that hasn't been used in decades. Excuse me for the burp there. But anyway, yes, I did two panels over the course of the weekend. I was drafted in to the Digitizer panel, which was um, a very interesting time. Um, a lot of Ganon doing weird things and really being quite filthy towards the crowd, us, the audience, Dan and Ravi, who are only asking questions, generally being a quite abusive, miserable bastard of a soul, but really funny with it. He knows I'm only joking, I'm sure. And of course, on Sunday, we had the YouTuber panel, which took place in the big main area. Um, the YouTuber panel, I mean, obviously we've done, I mean, I've done several panels like this now. Did one in Blackpool, did a little one with Slope in Glasgow. And this was a big one, obviously we had Ashton's, we had Octavius Kitten, we had Guru Larry, Nostalgia Nerd, DJ Slope, and Daz from Did You Know Gaming. So it was a very big panel. I mean, I think we all managed to have a good sound fins, although there was one moment where a couple of the panel were trying to say that the Sega 32X was better than the Sega Saturn, which was pretty mad, but you know, can let that sort of thing slide. I mean, it was a very, it's certainly a very full weekend. I mean, I barely get, got a chance to actually play any games this time around, I have to say. I think I got a chance to sit on a few computers from time to time, but generally I was always doing something. But the people at the venue seemed to enjoy it a lot. I mean, they certainly packed the print works out. I can imagine that the event was quite successful for replay events. And there were certainly some things that were quite different from what is the norm to this event. I mean, being in London, we had some rather good food going about, some nice food trucks doing Asian fried chicken, burritos, good stuff like that. Being able to get orchard pig cider. I mean, these sort of things never happen at Play Expos. I mean, if you go to Play Expo Blackpool, you know, you get £2.50 for a pint of Tetley's and hopefully the chips won't poison you, you know. That's generally what it's like. But it was generally quite a good time, just busy. I mean, there were some weird events that did happen at the expo. Um, apparently Paul Weller attended on the Saturday afternoon. Some people just reported seeing Paul Weller just casually strolling about the hall. So yeah, I mean, that's certainly a weird event. Now there are a couple of things that I do want to highlight. Um, I did get a couple of pickups and I will go to those in a moment. But there were a couple of newer games and things that I managed to experience, which I thought were very good, and um, I can tell you a bit about them here. I got to play Baggers in Space, which is the new game by Jim Bagley, the Spectrum legend who has currently been working on the ZX Spectrum Next, as you probably know. Um, his new game, Baggers in Space, which is going to be on the Next, as well as potentially other platforms, is a very... Um, it's very jetpack inspired with a touch of Metroid, a touch of Cybernoid perhaps, all sorts of things like that. A kind of arcadey experience but more complex than, you know, what jetpack originally was. It's a very nice little game and it certainly shows off the um, what you can do on a ZX Spectrum next. It still feels very Spectrum-y even though the actual game itself is considerably souped up. That's well worth checking out. Another little game that I managed to check out was uh, Mau Mau's Castle from Asobi Tech. 
I mean, obviously, I mean, I know the Atomic Tech guys quite well by this point. They're always around these events. And this is a nice little game. Um, you sort of have a weird system of control. You stick something into a mobile, because it's, it's going to be a mobile game. And you wave your hand across it. And it's, um, it's kind of like the bonus stage in Space Harrier. Only you have a lot of obstacles to avoid. It's a fun, like, fast, nice little arcade game. Um, one other thing that I did get to experience is an ant stream, which you might have seen a few people talking about lately. Ant stream is, well, it's one of perhaps quite a few projects by now that dub itself the Netflix of video games. It's mainly retro focused, and basically, it's going to allow you to stream video games on your mobile, on your telly, on your PC and all that and actually stream them, not, not download them or anything. Um, it's a challenging project, I mean it's something that they've been working for years on just trying to get all the licenses for various games, I mean they're hoping to launch with I think about 1000 in tow um, and obviously being retro games I mean there's many potential issues you can immediately pull up like how is you know the lag of streaming gonna affect the experience um they had a demo of it at the expo which was an actual demo there wasn't any smoke and mirrors to be fair you know there was a couple of times when things went a little wrong but generally actually playing it um the experience was good and they're trying to do um a lot of kind of creative things like creative uh, challenges with the game was on off farming land They've got a few licenses as well, SNK, Owen, Data East, so you know, if you want a bit of Metal Slug, Bad Dudes, hopefully indie games as well in the future, and hopefully even bigger licenses than that. They've got a whole lot of UK ones as well. Um, <clears throat> so I'm really hoping that that is a success for them. I mean, it's going to be difficult, don't get me wrong. I mean, setting up something like the Netflix of video games, you know, people have tried before and people have failed. but. Well, they're nice people, and to be honest, I'm not the most critical person in the world, so someone being nice is enough, you know. Enough for me to wish them all the best and, you know, think that they have good heart going into the project. So, yes, those were the main things that I actually got to experience. I did get a few pickups as well, um, and pickups for the future as well as the present. I managed to buy a couple of games, a couple of Mega Drive games. I bought a copy of. Echo the Dolphin, The Tides of Time. I've never been a massive Echo fan, but I've always really liked the look of this game and perhaps it'll be my chance to actually properly get into the games because when I played them at a younger age, I was too dumb to understand them. And I also picked up a nice Japanese copy of Crackdown, which, like most Japanese games, has considerably better art than the European version. Um, another cool thing, I've got a couple of other cool things. My lovely girlfriend, Sophia, has given me a nice handheld. It's one of those... Um, it's not a major handheld or anything, it's one of those Sega at games things. Um, kind of cool to have, I mean obviously, you know, at games emulation, a bit iffy, but it's nice to actually have something like that so I can see it for myself and it makes a nice comparison point. But speaking of em emulation, the nice guys at Games You Loved have um, given me a Retron 5, a Hyperkin Retron 5 complete with pad. Um, these machines were pretty big in the news um, what, about a year or so ago. They're great for playing Mega Drive, Famicom, NES, um, Master System with an adapter, SNES, uh, Game Boy Advance as well, which is really good. You can put an SD card in and I think you can kind of fix things up a little with some, you know, little Kung Fu. And yeah, I mean, they're really solid machines for that sort of thing. It's a very convenient solution when it comes to um, getting, like, emulating old games on a modern television as opposed to you know spending hundreds of pounds on a frame master and what have you so it's again it's really nice to have something like that and I just kind of like the big elongated look of the system in general so quite happy to get that so yeah those are things I got um but the main thing as always with these play expo weekends is the community I mean I had such a great time you know I get to meet essentially people who are I mean I don't necessarily just consider them as like YouTube co-collaborators or anything or like you know networking opportunities I mean the people in this community are my friends you know whether it's you know I mean so many people who I met you know everyone from like Ashens to Novabug, Larry of course finally you know getting a chance to properly meet him over the past couple of weeks and pretty much so many other people who I got the opportunity to meet as well as seeing Hugo Mai in the flesh I mean perhaps the highlight of the whole weekend was um, Saturday night um, a whole bunch of us went to a 
bar called Pimp Shway, like this really awesome place that's um, near Kings Cross. They do fantastic cocktails. They've got tons of old tellies showing kung fu movies in black and white. They've got a few arcade games. It was a magnificent place. The owners of that place are so awesome. Such wonderful people, like the most friendliest, most chattiest, most, you know, good time having owners of a bar that I think I've ever seen. It's definitely easily become my favorite place to drink in London. That was probably the highlight of the whole weekend because that was just fan bloody tastic. So yeah, that kind of concludes, kind of wraps up my experience of the expo weekend it was lovely it was a great couple of days obviously also chance to hang with my girlfriend as well who loved it all and kind of was really happy like being introduced to everybody like going around with me and really felt welcome as well which was awesome i mean again nothing really bad to say about the weekend i mean my general preference is to the more weirdish and wonderful events like I'm really looking forward to Blackpool. Blackpool tends to be my favourite of the play expos I have to say. But London, as far as like being like the first time in London, really great stuff. And so yeah, that kind of concludes the wrap up. And yeah, that's about it. Um, join me next time for another video of some weirdness I'm sure. And I will see you later. Bye for now.